Hello Gophers and welcome back to our new video where we'll be learning about how to write your first unit test case in Golan. Now to create a test case, it's a very simple few steps process where the first step involves creating a test.go file. Now test.go file has to have a name before that as well. So this triple X stands for the file that you are actually testing. And this test.go file has to be in the same directory where your actual file which has the implementation is there. Now in this test.go file, the package name that you write on your first first line of any Go program is the same package name that your actual file, that is the file that you are actually testing is in. So the package name should match. Otherwise, we'll not be able to access the private way uh, private functions or test them now import the testing package in your test.go file now this testing package gives you certain structures and underlying functions which helps you in executing your test suit now create a function which has a name that starts with keyword test and then you write any name that suits your test case best so this should be something that that will help you understand what is the test case about normally if you have one test case for one function then i would suggest to have the exact function name after the keyword test uh, in the function name now this function has a special input parameter that is of type t as a structure and this t comes from the testing package which we have imported in step 3 now you start executing the function that you want to test get or store the output variables in some some way in your in your uh, function and then test them against an expected result if you don't get the expected result then you call either of these functions that I have listed from the t structure so these are all functions that are related to the t structure now we'll be discussing all these functions in another video so that we don't uh, we don't uh, overload this single video with everything about the testing structure uh, test structure but we'll be using the error and error f function for this video but in next video we'll we'll definitely discuss about the fatal and failed functions now let's go ahead and start writing our first test case this was all about theory but let's get our hands dirty and understand how we'll actually write test case now for this example i've written a simple program to check if a number that is any number that you supply in is a prime number or not now i've written a package that is for tutorial 2 now I'll publish this package on my github account and you can go ahead and download this or clone this repository so that you can get every tutorials example that we solve over here now in this part I have written a function that is responsible for checking if the input number is a prime number or not now it would only return true or false as a result now this program if i want to test then what i have done is i have created a file that is prime underscore test.go as discussed so we are we are going to test the prime.go file so when i create this file the first thing is the package name so package name if you see it is same as the package name of the main program that we are going to test i have imported the testing package i have created a function that is test check if prime now check if prime is exactly the name of function that i'm going to test from this prime.go now the input parameter is testing.t a structure for testing.t so this is an object test now i have created an input variable that would be the number that i will be supplying into the function i'll have an expected output so I know that if this is true this is a prime number or not so I'll be supplying in a fun number that I know for sure that if it is a prime or not then I'll try to figure out 
the output from the function so I have stored the output from the function check if prime so this is the actual calling of the function from function from the main main actual main package we supplied in the input we got the output now if I am just checking if the output is not equal to expected output so if these are two not equal then I'll be calling the error function now error function is exactly same as the print ln function it takes in arguments that is interface or so a slice of arguments which belongs to interface uh, blank interface so you can supply in anything and n number of arguments so I have just supply like number input whatever the input is check if prime expected value was the expected value but we got this as an output now let's run this now to run this you just have to first move to the directory and execute go test now if you move to this directory it will this command will call all the test cases available in that directory so when I run go dot test it says it has passed and it gives me an output with the time that it took to execute the complete test case now there can be scenarios where you want to know which test case so you may have multiple test cases as well so you want to know that which test case did run and which test case resulted in some error in case there are some so we have a verbose mode where we'll just give hyphen v it will print that it ran the test check if prime so this is the function or the test case and it gives me an state that it passed and it took this much time so this is how if you have multiple test cases in the file it will print the status of each test case now we if we have multiple test cases to be executed on the same function so how how we can do it because if I keep copying this function and I keep doing it it would be very cumbersome to keep updating the test case input value expected value and keep updating all this thing so we have a method of testing where we say we can create a table of input and output expected outputs and we can have a function where we evaluate all those things now let's go ahead and check what is that method and how we can do it so I've created another function that is test if uh, number is prime or not but with some name change that contains table because we are going to try this method of creating table of your input and expected outputs now what I have done is I have created a struct which has an input parameter as integer because the function that we are going to test expects an integer variable and only one in input variable and we have an expected boolean output now this structure I have created many test cases like 2 should be true 3 should be true 4 should be false 7 should be true and so on so you can keep adding any test case that comes around in in later part of your uh, production release or anything you can keep just updating this test uh, table and rest all will be handled by this for logic now this for logic does nothing but it executes on the test slice that you have created it takes one by one test cases and what it does is in test structure in the t structure we also have a method called run now this method takes in two arguments basically first one is name of your test case second one is a function that it will uh, be called when you run this test case so I have created the name of the function like this so testing whatever the input value is testing 2 like testing 3 or like this so that it's easy for me to understand by the name what was the input value now this function contains again an input value uh, input parameter of testing dot t that you have to supply in now what I have done is I have called 
the check if prime with the input value from the test case and I've stored the output value now I've compared the output value with the expected value from the test case again now if these two don't match I've used the error f now error f is similar to print f function that we have in fmt package so you need to supply in the format and the replacing values that you want to replace so i'm sorry we just have to okay yeah so here again i have mentioned that number so and so and when we execute the prime the expected value was this and we got this now let's try and execute this again with the verb post mode so that you know what test case are getting executed and what are the name of the test cases being executed now if you see it ran the test case test check if prime which was the first function that we created and it passed now it started running the test case function that is prime with table the second function and inside the second function it has sub test cases those are these test cases that are being created under the for loop so it has started running those test cases if you see it prefixes the function actual function name after the test case name before the test case name sorry so test 2 test 3 test 4 test 7 test 2 8 7 9 and so on now it ran all these function and now if you want to see the result it is showing this result now let's let's spoof some output uh, expected output as false so let's say if this we expect this as a non prime number so we should we should get a failure in our test case execution now if you see it got failed and if you see where it failed it failed on this test case so this test case you you exactly know that okay this was the input value that was being tested so now I, I i exactly know which exact test case i have to check okay so this is how you can test and keep adding your test cases for simple functions now in the next video we'll be discussing all the functions that you that are available in the test or the t structure though some functions like failed fail or fatal or deadline there are, there are a couple of functions more so we'll we'll discuss those in detail so that at least the structure is is of more sense when you start writing a test case and if there are scenarios that comes up and you want a particular functionality and it is already there in the test structure you can directly go ahead and use that hope this video was helpful for you guys please do not forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any new tutorials or videos that we put across for you guys also comment down below in case you have any suggestions for any new tutorials or any new video that you guys wish us to do for you guys and we'll we'll try to address all those queries as soon as possible and hope to see you guys in the next video